So what do you think of my graphic? Now, i got a story behind this because originally I was going to talk about what happened at the Louvre. I don't know if you caught this or not. But you had some global warming nut dress up as an elderly woman in a wheelchair so he could throw a cake at the Mona Lisa. Luckily, the Mona Lisa is behind bulletproof glass, so no damage to the Mona Lisa. And he was screaming that artists everywhere should protect the planet, screaming it in French. But that was my original idea for today's video. And then I came across this article at insider.com about what's going on in Uvalde, Texas. Because this debacle, this controversy over the mass shooting in Uvalde, it's not going away. And now people are pointing fingers. So I came up with this phrase, cake and face. Cake and face. Because that's exactly what's going on here. These people just got a big cake in their face by the American public who weren't going to buy their BS at the highest levels of our government. And that's what they're saying here. Texas Police Union says misinformation is coming from, quote, the very highest levels of law enforcement as authorities change story around the Uvalde school shooting. Well, there's a way to get around this. Fix this problem. It's called telling D.C. to go to hell. We don't need D.C. Now, if you want to go there and meet and air out your differences as representatives of the people, okay, fine. But D.C. should not be controlling what states do because states are sovereign and independent. Mentioned it before, because you have big bloated government, you have people who fall through the cracks. So don't be surprised when you have somebody like a Salvador Ramos who goes out and commits this crime, if in fact he did carry out this mass shooting. And I've been going through this case. This thing is just, it's just sticking with me like, like glue. Because I keep going back to the same questions. And if you think about this, using logic and reason, just work with me here for a moment. Put yourself in the shoes of a mass shooter. Using logic and reason now, would you just blazingly crash your truck into a ditch within feet of a school that you plan to shoot up, carrying rifle in hand so everybody can see you? No, 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 no. That's not what you're going to do. You're going to be as inconspicuous as possible. You're first going to survey the area. Kind of what do you uh, do an urban exploration thing. That's what you're going to do. See if there are any security gaps. Find a way in. And if urban explorers get caught, they usually say, oh, I'm just taking pictures. God bless our urban explorers. In fact, I should do a video about urban exploration here in the future. I mean, after all, we are about history and culture preservation here on the channel, preserving our way of life as Americans. Culture Confederacy here. Welcome back to the channel. It's Thursday. So go out and use this phrase, cake and face. I love that, cake and face. Hey, when you're good, you're good. But using logic and reason, now you're not going to just blatantly crash your truck and hop out of your damaged vehicle, truck, whatever, and uh, carry a gun in hand or rifle and just charge for a school when you don't know if security's around or if you have any officers who are patrolling the area. You might even try to disguise yourself as a janitor. So if I did mention, this is an article by Natalie Musumeci. I believe this came out today. Is today June 1st? It says June 1st here. And they've got a picture here of Stephen C. McCraw. Hi, I'm Stephen C. McCraw of Uvalde Texts. I'm the director and 
Colonel of the Texas Department of Public Safety, speaking during a press conference about the mass shooting at Robb Elementary School on this day, May 27, 2022. So it highlights here in the article, the largest police union in Texas criticized authorities' handling of the Uvalde school shooting. The union said false and misleading information of the shooting came from high levels of government. That misinformation created a hotbed of unreliability, and that's in quotes, around finding the truth the union added. No, this was all a ruse. At this point, I'm going to say it's all a ruse, and I'm going to stand behind that. Because think about it, folks. Have we seen any of this documentation for the hospitals telling us exactly what these injuries were that these people suffered? I mean, we have the names, <clears throat> pardon me, getting choked up here. We have the names of the vic the victims. But do we really know their injuries? And, and did you see what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma? They had this mass shooting at a medical facility, at a hospital. What better place to stage a mass shooting than at a hospital? Think about it, folks. Now, I'm going to say this again because I said on my last video, I'm not denying that it's possible that events like this can take place. But at this frequency, we have what happened uh, what New Jersey, Uvalde, Texas, last night in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There was another shooting somewhere involving kids. I don't know if it was in Chicago or whatever. Well, there's always mass shootings going on in Chicago. Gang-related, of course. But at this frequency... I don't think so. Sounds to me like somebody's got a political agenda. And they need to come clean about what happened in Uvalde, Texas. They owe the American people at least that. So as I highlighted a moment ago, the largest police union in Texas criticized authorities' handling of the Uvalde Elementary School shooting saying that false and misleading information about the mass shooting came from the very highest levels of government and law enforcement. It's time that we nix D.C. Bring everything back to the states. But the states handle their own affairs. In fact, Texas at this point, I want to be so bold to say Texas needs to secede. Seriously, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, seriously, Texas. Let me take another sip of my coffee here. Texas just needs to secede at this point. Because if the highest levels of our government are going to put out all these statements, and some of them aren't true, and you have all this finger pointing, then it's just time to go your separate ways. Because one side's not going to admit to what happened. The other side's not going to admit to what happened. I mean, let's be honest here. Nobody wants cake in the face. Sources that Texans once saw as ironclad and completely reliable, getting back to the article, have now been proven false, the Combined Law Enforcement Association of Texas said, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my throat today, in a statement released on Tuesday night, this false information has exaggerated ill-informed speculation, which has in turn created a hotbed of unreliability when it comes to finding the truth. Cleet said, that's capital C-L-E-A-T, which is an acronym, I forget what it stands for, Texas authorities have faced intense backlash for changing their story more than a dozen times. Doesn't that uh, raise a red flag, folks? About what happened before, during, and after the May 24th shooting at Yaboldi's Rob Elementary School. Now, of course, as you go through an investigation, facts can change. New information comes to light. But you're changing your tune several times here. We're talking about the narrative. We're talking about the timeline. The background of Salvador Ramos, who we're told in the beginning, didn't have a juvenile record. And as it turns out, four years ago, he was arrested for threatening to shoot up a school. His school. And now they're saying that he had between, what, $4,000 to $6,000 worth of firearms? Where did he get the money for that? 
He was working part-time flipping burgers. At a Burger King or Wendy's, something like that. Of course, this shooting left 19 children and two teachers dead. Of course, there has been a great deal of false and misleading information in the aftermath of this tragedy, the police union said, adding some of the information came from the very highest levels of government and law enforcement. Additionally, the police union advised its more than 25,000 members to cooperatively Full, uh, to cooperate fully with an official governmental investigation into actions relating to law enforcement response to the Uvalde mass shooting. The union made the warning after state officials said Pete Arandondo, remember him? <clears throat> I'm trying to get through this video, one take video, guys. So pardon me uh, if I'm clearing my throat here. The chief of the police for the Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District wasn't cooperating with the Texas Department of Public Safety, which is leading the investigation into the mass shooting. Well, I'd like to know why. Wouldn't we all? Last week, Colonel Steve McCraw, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, identified Arredondo as the on-scene commander during the school shooting who made the quote-unquote wrong decision in delaying authorities for more than an hour from breaching the classroom where an 18-year-old gunman carried out the shooting. The on-scene commander at that time believed that it had transitioned from an active shooter to a barricaded subject. This is kind of repeating what was in another article I read, but there is some new information here. From the benefit of the hindsight, where uh, hindsight, this reminds me of that episode of Will and Grace, that word hindsight, where they have a flashback where Will comes out to Grace and there well, he, he proposed to her to hide that he was gay or whatever. And he tells her at the last minute that he can't go through with it because he's gay. And he says to her at one point, they're in, this is the scene where they're in the kitchen. And he says to her, well, yes, in hindsight, that wasn't a great idea. She says, hindsight, what is that, one of your gay words? <laughs> Wherever I see this word in these, in these articles here, hindsight. Because this seems to be the buzzword, actually, come to think of it, hindsight. I think of that scene from Will and Grace. Hindsight, what is that, one of your gay words? But from the benefit of hindsight, where I'm sitting now, of course, it was not the right decision. It was the wrong decision, period, McCraw said. There you go, end of story. Ultimately, a U.S. Border Patrol, t- <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun, folks. A U.S. Border Patrol tactical team stormed into the classroom more than an hour after, let me do this dramatically here, okay? Ultimately, a U.S. Border Patrol tactical team stormed into the classroom more than an hour after the gunman entered the school and shot and killed him. Right on, brother. F yeah, we're Team America. Yes, I did see that movie. Texas DPS said on Tuesday that Arredondo stopped cooperating with state investigators and had yet to respond to a request for a follow-up interview. But Arredondo on Wednesday denied this to CNN, saying, I am in contact with DPS every day. Every day he's in contact with DPS. Yet nobody knows anything. And you're changing your story how many times? DPS did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Oh, of course, by insider on Wednesday, because they're pointing fingers at each other. The Uvalde police are, uh, or the Texas uh, police union is pointing fingers at the government, or the D.C. D.C. is pointing fingers at Uvalde, Texas, or these authorities in Texas. Come on, Texas, just secede. We did it once before, you can do it again. Meanwhile, the U.S. Justice Department said this weekend that it would investigate the Uvalde school shooting, a move that was welcomed by CLEAT. I still don't know what that stands for. So last, uh, well, it's a quote here, paragraph quote. We believe that a strong, independent investigation by the U.S. Department of Justice with assistance from the FBI, no, 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 all wrong. All wrong. It needs to be an investigation by the Texas Bureau of Investigations and local authorities. The federal government needs to stay out of it, period. Thus helping agencies everywhere to understand, agencies everywhere to understand how best to stop a similar compound tragedy from happening again. How about you let these communities handle that on their own? The police union said, end of quote. So I had to share this article with you. Uh, Folks, 
I think the American uh, people aren't buying this anymore. Mass shootings uh, in this uh, uh, short amount of time. I mean, if there was something that happened every so often, once in a blue moon. I'll never forget, I was in the bank one day. And I was looking uh, at the TV or whatever while I was waiting in line. And they had one of these uh, little gunfights going on. I think it was at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. And you could tell that this was staged. You could tell that this was fake phony. It was the breaking news on CNN. So just to clarify here, because I have to clear the air. No, I am not a conspiracist. I don't believe the earth is flat. That I don't believe that we did not go to the moon. I don't believe in chemtrails. I use logic and reason to figure things out. Folks, you're being hoodwinked here. You're being hoodwinked. You guys in Texas, authorities in Texas, Texas Police Union, people at the FBI, the ATF, all these, all you cats need to come clean about what happened. You're all in on it. You don't want to admit to it. Come to my channel and admit to it in the comments below and tell us exactly why you felt the need to carry this out. Because if this was real, if this really happened as you claim, then there would have been security checks in place at that school. The Texas Bureau of Investigation would be on hand immediately, as would have the Uvalde SWAT team. My dad was a firefighter for 30 years. So he interacted with police all the time. He told me stories, <clears throat> stories that I can't repeat here. But I can guarantee you that if he did what they did in this situation, they would have heard about it. They would have heard about it. And he was on, he would go to calls like this where, uh, where you had, uh, uh, let's say you had maybe a shooting or, uh, you know, did, you had, uh, let's say a fire or something. You know, he would go to these type of incidents sometimes, car accidents. Because they do send ambulances out, EMTs out. Or that's it, house calls, you know. But folks, I'm just, I'm sorry, but I'm not buying this because if they're pointing fingers at each other and they can't get their facts straight, you know, and they're not even going to tell us the truth about Salvador Ramos, then something's going on here that ain't right. They need to get it together and be honest with the American people. That's all we're asking. Be honest with us. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, a one-take video. It is what it is. You like the video, you hate the video. Well, you know, the, that's on you. But if you like the video, you know what to do. You can also catch me at Instagram. Hashtag Jason Composes. Because I do write music in my spare time. Or catch me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. This is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country. I'll catch you next time. And y'all have a good Thursday.